Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing really well today. I'm very excited for today's video because it is an office tour slash productivity space tour. And as you guys know, if you've been around for a while, I'm a violinist, a violin teacher, and also a little bit of a content creator. So yeah, very excited to show you my creative space. That's all what my office is about. Come on in. for my standing desk. Very fancy, it goes even higher, but this was definitely an upgrade that I felt like during the pandemic, as I'm teaching and you know, as violinists, we're not cellists, obviously. So we are usually standing and it makes a huge difference to sort of have this freedom because otherwise I'm just sitting on my butt all day. The standing desk is a game changer. So besides that, this chair, okay, from the chairs that I've had previously, if you wanna show that. So compared to that chair, it is a very, very comfortable chair and it just, yeah, was from Amazon. So I'll link everything down below, by the way. Moving on, I wanted something to sort of protect the table and also when I have my violin on here, uh, I wanted it to be padded whenever I would, you know, demonstrate something for a student and then put the violin down. So I initially wanted to buy this mouse pad thing and get a mouse as well, but I actually just use it to put my violin on it so that I can put my violin on it and not worry about you know, the wood clanking on a hard surface at all. So that's sort of something that I felt like the little upgrades make a huge difference. Sort of like when you are at a violin shop and they have these like padded tables, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Moving on to my computer, which if you watch Rick and Morty, I love this show. <laughs> Anyways, this laptop stand is definitely something that I felt like made a huge difference on my posture as well. As violinists or musicians in general, we need to take care of our posture. By the way, I have a video all about violin posture. I will link it either here or in the description down below. So not something to be messed with, AKA ergonomic chair and the head is up with a laptop stand. So yeah, besides that, I have this little trinket holder, which I think is honestly supposed to be an ashtray, but I just keep my hair ties in here, my clips, and also, this is something I'm very excited about. When I was in Florida, this band Shamanic Roots was performing and I really, really liked their music. And I asked the singer for, you know, their Instagram or something, and he was just like, this is the name of our band, have this guitar pick and like, Gift. The trinket holder is from Urban Outfitters, I believe. I got it forever ago. You'll see, I, I have a thing for hands here as well. I really like hands. It sounds weird, but I have a thing for hands because they can create so many wonderful things, such as playing the violin. And um, I personally have pretty <laughs> ugly hands, <laughs> but they're, you know, useful and I'm very thankful. And I just feel like that has a whole different meaning to me than it has to other people I know so yeah so moving on I have this little cup to hold my pens etc I got it from the Brooklyn flea market and underneath it I have a little musician's notebook if I want to take notes um, this one's a new one when I tell a student I send the music then I will not forget it because I actually write it down and I am forgetful so <laughs> I'm very happy with the wireless charger I like to have my phone on the side and my computer on the other so if you look at my iPad, I have all of my music on here. I do get a lot of questions as of what type of music apps I'm using and Foursquare is the one that I feel the most comfortable with. That one as well as whenever I want new music, of course the Handy Library app. This is my iPad and I usually just keep it right in here. Over here I have my headphone stand and of course, very important for a musician, my Sennheiser MK4. Alrighty, coming to you live from my teacher setup view, I want to take a moment to talk to you about audio equipment as a professional classical musician. 
Growing up in Europe in a family of classical musicians, Sennheiser has always been a part of our audio equipment. It is a German family-owned business that started out with doing professional audio equipment only, and to this day they are doing professional-grade audio equipment that is also at-home friendly. So thank you Sennheiser for sponsoring today's video. I do believe that the audio setup that I have going on right now is the best home studio setup that I could have wished for, and so far teaching and working with this setup has been a dream. So let's learn a little bit more about what you want to look for in a high quality microphone from my experience as a professional instrumentalist. If you are newer to microphones, there are XLR microphones and there are USB microphones. USB microphones, you know, they're great. You can easily transport them and just plug them into your computer and call it a day. However, the sound quality does suffer from that. You know, the depth of sound and the colors of the violin they are so, so important, if not the most important. So a USB microphone would not be the right choice for me. An XLR microphone, however, such as the MK4 by Sennheiser, is exactly what I want and need as a professional classical violinist. For XLR microphones, you will need an interface to connect it to your computer. I have a pretty standard one, it works like a charm. I'll put everything in the description below. Investing in a high quality audio setup to record with and work online with is more crucial than ever so many auditions and competitions and lessons are still happening online. I find that the Sennheiser MK4 microphone picks up a very crisp, clear and brilliant sound quality which is chef's kiss for acoustic instruments. This cardioid microphone features a 24 karat gold-plated diaphragm and has a dynamic range of 130 decibels. And just to give you a little bit of an idea, the human voice is about 60 decibels loud and the violin usually never exceeds like 100 decibels. And if you do exceed 100 decibels, then RIP your ears. <laughs> So knowing that the MK4 has a larger capacity than I will probably ever need is reassuring to know. Oh, and can I just say, a lot of microphones these days pick up too much bass in my experience. Let me know in the comments if you agree. And of course you can adjust the bass sometimes, but I don't have to worry about that at all with the MK4 because it is ideal for acoustic recordings. All right, we talked about recording ourselves with quality. What about listening to other people's recordings with quality as well? Y'all know that I live in New York, one of the noisiest cities in the world, in my experience. And although I've moved to Brooklyn, where it's a lot more quiet, traffic and extra noise is pretty much constant. You guys know, for us musicians, our ears and our hands are our most valuable assets, so we need to take care of them. Choosing what kind of headphones or earplugs we're listening with has a lot to do with our ear health. The Sennheiser Momentum wireless headphones are not only cute, but also have active noise cancellation which actually protects you from having to set the volume even higher than your ears can handle in order to cancel out outside traffic noise. So it's a healthier way to listen to music without having to blast up the volume and damage your ears to be frank. The Momentum Wireless also feature a 17 hour battery life so if you are forgetting to charge them like yours truly, then Sennheiser's got your back. I can accurately listen to my students' performances when I give Skype lessons indoors in the presence of my bay, the AC, and whenever I go outside, it can get quite hot. So I usually wear in-ear earbuds, which are these ones, the Momentum True Wireless 2. They are actively noise canceling as well, and they're actually also splash and sweat proof. So I wear them to the gym as well. Sound waves, no matter how beautiful, such as in music, can severely damage your hearing organs. So unfortunately, I've met too many musicians and people who actually have tinnitus. So it is unthinkable to me to wear earbuds without noise cancellation. By the way, noise cancellation usually just blocks out noise, but active noise cancellation actually eliminates the outside noise. So as I said, this allows you to really enjoy the music without having to max out your volume. It never hurts to have an added protection for the well-being of your ears, so the quality and technology that Sennheiser offers have been a true blessing for an audiophile like me. Moving on to my top shelf. If you're from an Asian household, you probably do recognize these. These little uh, what are they called? Do, mm. Dorai, Doraemon? I wish to say Doraemon. Darumai, yeah. So these are little Darumai dolls. They have a way bigger meaning than just looking funny and cute with one eye. If you have a wish that you really want to have true, you draw in one eye and you write at the bottom of it 
what your wish is. You put it in a spot in your apartment where you see it every day so that you're reminded constantly why you are putting the work in, yeah, every day. Um, and then once your dream does come true, you get to put in the other eye. I think it's a pretty cool reminder every day. So that's what I like to have up there. And then also over here, as you can see, this hand thing, it's supposed to be for rings. This I got from a thrift shop somewhere in Italy years ago. I was probably like 13 or something. And then also, of course, my violin strings. My favorite are from Peter Infeld. And besides that, I like to just keep things light and easy to maintain with fake plants and dried plants. So that way I don't even have to worry about maintenance or anything. They do add a nice pop of greenery into your space, especially during the pandemic, you do want to feel like you're not just simply living in a shoebox. So even if it's fake, it's kind of nice to feel like you're sort of outside. And then over here, of course, I have my music stand. It's a travel music stand, so it's super, super light and easy to fold up. Now, when it comes to my sheet music, this is probably 15% of my collection. This Japanese lucky cat reminds me of my sister because I kind of just stole it from her. And for that zen vibe, I have this old diffuser. My favorite scent is this one from Muji. This antique mirror I got from Craigslist. I yet have to find a better spot for it. I usually prefer hanging up art. I'm not usually someone to hang up certificates, including my Juilliard graduation diploma, but the YouTube play button blends in perfectly in this corner. These vinyl recording coasters, I thought they were so cute. And let's move on to my violin corner. And then if you come over here, you can see that my violin has a nice little spot on the couch. So usually I do, you know, close it so that nothing can happen to it in case this lamp would fall down, which it doesn't. Yeah, I have it in my nice little gave up case with my sister and me as a picture over here as well. Yeah, so my buddy has a nice comfy bed over here, you know? I wish it could like be the centerpiece instead of these dry dried flowers. The sun, you know? So <laughs> definitely not an option. And it's close by to my office. Okie dokie, so this was my office tour. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat useful and inspiring because I felt like I had this time in the pandemic where I just went down a rabbit hole of office tours and productivity spaces. That sort of really motivated me to create one of my own. So yeah, so I hope you have a great day and 